Hi, this is Tracy with Genesis Blogging, and this is a tutorial on how to use Fire FTP. First thing you need to do is you need to come over to this website and you need to download and install the Firefox web browser. I just click this button and install that because Fire FTP is actually an add on to the Firefox browser because Fire FTP actually works all within the browser itself. Once you have Firefox set up and installed, then you want to go to this website right here and you want to download the Fire FTP add-on. You click the link and it'll add it on to your browser itself and it'll all work within the browser. Once you have Fire FTP installed, you'll click Tools up here at the top and you'll come down here and you'll see Fire FTP. Now you can click this and it will open it and um, you can start using it from there. Um, but what I'm going to show you how I actually normally have mine set up. I disabled it so I can show you how to set up the shortcut. You want to come up here in your toolbar and you want to click your right mouse button and you want to go down to customize and it's going to pop up a window. Scroll down here and you'll see the Fire FTP icon. Hold down your mouse button and drag it up here to your toolbar and let it go. And there you have a Fire FTP icon up there. Click Done and close it. Now when you click this Fire FTP icon, it'll open it up in a new tab for you in your browser window, which makes it really quick and easy for you to get over here to um, open up your Fire FTP and FTP things. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to set up a new account. So you want to click this little arrow and you want to click create account. Now you're going to need to get your account information from your web host because every web host is different as to how you need to connect to your um, hosting, your domain, your hosting account for FTP. For my account, I'm with HostGator and I just need to enter in um, my domain name like this. That's all I need to enter in. Now you'll notice that it automatically filled in the same thing up at the top when I type that in. All that is, is how it identifies it in this list right here to make it easy for me to, you know, recognize which account I want to click and, and connect to. That's all it is. So I can either leave it like that or I can type in something like this. It's just an identifier for the list. That's all it is. And then down here would be your username and then this would be your password. Whatever that information is for you to connect to your FTP, your account through FTP. Um, now normally for my account, that's all I need to enter in is just the domain name, the username, and the password um, to connect to my account. Now if you need to change like the port or you know any of that, you can, you can change that here if your um, web host would require you to change that information you know, the connection type, um, and anything else. The, these are the tabs where you need to do that. I generally do not need to touch that. I usually just need to um, change this information and then I would click OK and it would set up the account. Since I already have mine set up, I'm just going to click Cancel and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose the account that I want to connect to and I'm going to click Connect. And that's it. I'm already connected. Now when you connect to an account, in almost every single case, it's very rare that you would have a web host that it would be any different, you would then click and double click pub the public HTML because all of your files that would be on the web would usually be in the public HTML area. So you would double click to go under and this is all the files that are actually on the web. So you want to double click so that you're underneath and show and up to be able to upload all your files to the public HTML area. So everything on the right side over here in this area is actually your web hosting servers. Everything over here would be the files that are on your computer. So you could click the browse button and this is where you can click and you can go into your My Documents, your My Computer to browse to find the files that you want to then upload over to your computer space. So that's how that would work, how you would find the files that you would want to upload. 
Okay, now to upload, it's very, very simple. Um, say I want to upload a whole entire folder and all of the files beneath it. Say this tester folder. If I click this, you'll see that there's two files actually inside of this tester folder. If I want to go back up a level, I would just click this and it goes back up and I'm back to the same, you know, where I was before. But if you click it once, it's selected this folder and it will select that folder and it can, I can upload the folder and everything that's inside that folder all at one time with one click. And so I would click this and it will upload this folder and its contents to my web host server. And I would just click this. Now it's saying, well, the file's already there. So if I want to overwrite that the file that's already there and everything that's inside of it, I can just say, yep, overwrite it all, or I can say, no, skip something or whatever. So I can go ahead and overwrite everything, and it's that's it. It overwrites the whole thing. Um, if I would choose to only want to overwrite a certain file within that, I can open this up and then come over here and open up the tester folder on this side. And then I can just pick and choose. Say I just want to upload just one file, and then I can just upload just the one file and just overwrite just the one file and just do it that way. Okay, so then come back over this way. And say I want to download several files from my server over to my computer. Um, if I wanted to create, say, a backup of my site files from my um, hosting space to my computer. Um, to create a backup folder like I have here, all I did to do that was I right mouse clicked anywhere within either side. You can do it on either side. Right mouse click and create directory. And it will open up a little box like this where you can, you know, backup um, folder three, you know, and you can do it that way. And then you would double click it to open it so you're inside of it. And then you can choose, you know, what files or folders that you would want to download into this. Um, you would just click download to download files or folders into this backup folder. If you wanted to select and choose several, you can click the first one. And then you can go hold down the shift key. And then the very last file that you select, it'll choose everything from the first one to the last one if you've held down the shift key. Click the first one, hold down the shift key, then select, click the last one, and it'll choose all of them in between. If you click download, it'll download everything. If you only want to choose certain ones, click one, hold down the control key, then you can just pick and choose whichever ones you want to download. So click one, hold down the control key, you know, and then you can pick and choose which files you want to download, and then you would click the download button. So same concept that way. Um, so that's pretty much how you would do that. If you need to ever change permissions on anything, you would right click, and that would be what the properties is for. And this is where you would change the permissions. That's also called CMOD. Um, this is only applicable if you're installing a script or a program that where you would need to change the permissions on something to allow access for the program for it to be able to write to it, read to it, that sort of thing. That's usually more advanced, not something you normally have to do. Um, but you need to know where it's at. That's how you do it. Right mouse click properties and if you need to include the contents or the um, not just the folder but also all of the things inside of the folder you would obviously include properties including contents. Um, to um, control the properties or the of the Fire FTP itself, how it opens, how it operates, you go tools and options. Um, if you want to control the interface, it by default opens in a new tab when you open it. But if you wanted to open a new window, you can do that. Um, you know, this is where basically you control how Fire FTP itself runs. So that's tools and options, and you can set all that right there. Um, to edit um, an existing account that you have set up, you would click Edit. And it would open it up the new the window right there, and it would you could edit the uh, all the username, password, and all that right there. Um, to abort 
if you are uploading or downloading and you need to abort that connection you would click abort and of course to disconnect your um, connection to your server you would click disconnect and so that's pretty much it very basic pretty easy to use the most difficult part about using FTP is getting those settings your username password and the host name correct from you need to get that information from your web host itself so that's it that's how you use fire FTP for Firefox and this is Tracy Noppy with Genesis blogging have a great day